my name is Derek Karner. I'm a program manager at the Elizabeth Foundation for the Arts Studio Program. And today we're welcome, welcoming Lisa Kerr, who has a studio at EFA and is currently in residence at the North Fork um, Residency, which is a partnership program with the Potato Farm Project. Um, the North Fork Residency is in Jamesport, uh, Long Island. Uh, if you've been out there, it's very nice, and it, but it is a, a sort of a solitary uh, retreat uh, residency where she is alone. And so today I think she's going to talk to us about how that is. So with, uh, please welcome Lisa. Thank you. Thank you, Derek, so much for the introduction. And thank you to the EFA, to Bill Carroll and to Derek for um, inviting me to come out here and also for the Potato Farm Project. Um, but he and Drew, um, who I haven't met yet, but that I feel like I've become good friends with in the communication back and forth while I've been here. It's a, it's a beautiful gift to be out here. Um, it's the first time in two years I've been outside of Manhattan in sort of a longer period of time. So to see birds again is like phenomenal. And to be in this these surroundings with absolute quiet has been something else. Um, I think the other day I saw two hawks that were circling around in the sky, which was absolutely amazing. And I had an encounter with a butterfly that um, was flying around, even though it's very early. <laughs> and as it was beginning to leave, sort of in my mind, I was like, no, 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 don't go, don't go. And it actually turned around and came right back at me, circled around my head for two, two rounds and then left up into the sky after that. So it feels very special. Um, and you can already, I think, tell that I'm not seeing too many people since all these inputs are having such an impact on, on me that it's a huge thing to, to see these different uh, creatures around me, rabbits, birds, um, and others. And so um, I, as an artist, many of you know me, I think already, but as an artist, I work with light and oftentimes projections um, using video with installations, alternative photography processes. And um, in general, I'm, I'm interested in exploring these thin lines between what's real and what's illusionary. Um, and these ways in which we see the world through our own filters um, and oftentimes based on personal memories or um, desires or narratives of different kinds. And they, of course, affect the way we, we think and see and explore things. But I've also been looking into sort of these darker sides of isolation and being on my own um, through the pandemic. And it was in that way I came out here too, to explore both darkness and isolation in, in these surroundings. And little did I know that a very dear friend of mine passed away and I got the news just as I arrived to the residency, which um, was a hard thing um, to experience. And I know that many of you know Colin Chase, who is a dear colleague and um, have the same kind of, um, or are going through a lot of sadness from that too. Um, so being here and sort of being in this moment where, well, I think in, in different times in life, we lose our anger in some ways. And what we can do then is to begin to record and to begin to just be and to absorb what we have around us. And that's what I've been trying to do as I'm reflecting, sharing and um, writing and um, also making this, which I thought I would share this kind of visual diary of the the days that I've been here, it's been a little over a week, so it's really a short time, um, but I've been um, going for lots of walks and exploring um, the surroundings in different ways. So I wanted to start out just with this little film that is like a visual diary, um, it's about six minutes and there's no sound, um, just to share a little bit of this experience of being here. Here we go.
So yeah, so so I wanted to share a little bit of this diary from the past seven, eight days that I've been out here. Um, and this is sort of a couple of images from here where you can see my 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 <laughs> my place of living and being and working with different cameras that I'm playing around with. Um, I have a little wild game surveillance camera, I have an underwater camera, I have brought some um, pinhole cameras too um, that I'm setting up to go around and uh, photograph in different places. Um, and it's a it's a really beautiful little um, house here um, with where you can spend time. I think I have a rabbit underneath the um, <laughs> the floor to and inside it too I have my large um, pinhole camera that I've brought out that I will start uh, experimenting with in the garden in not too long so um, it's busy it's gr a great place to reflect and to to write and to um, sift through so through thoughts um, as one is processing. Um, this is a, an example of a pinhole camera with um, little apertures here that I've made in a chocolate box and um, that I'll be working with. These are some images from before where you can see how you can um, achieve these different overlapping scenes um, with multiple apertures. Um, and this is the way that some of the footage that you just looked at was made. Um, it's a little too cold to go into the sea. So I have a camera on a string and I sort of throw it out, <laughs> very low budget, low tech. <laughs> I did consider sort of a, a fishing pole, but I didn't get that far. So I'm just basically trying my lasso skills the best as I can to get it out into the water <laughs> and then let it roll with the, the water. And it's fascinating to see how different it is from day to day um and how it changes the way the footage that i end up getting from it even if the water looks relatively the same um i've um, become very aware of the ebbs and the tides and and the the ways in which the waves are are um rolling on that particular day here's another uh, shot of the little camera that's out in the big open space um with a little uh, connection to to land. Um, oh, sorry, I think messed up here. There we go. And these are some of the shots from from inside the camera um, stills from the video that I have, where you get these really fascinating abstracted forms sometimes that are rich and and interesting. And another part of the residency has also been to sit by the fireplace. There's a little fire pit here in the garden. It's a, it can be cold, but at night it's absolutely spectacular. And since I'm working and thinking about darkness, it seems appropriate to be in the dark also physically. Um, so I've photographed some of the things that I see around at night um, as well. A lot of this has to do with the work that I've done um, and worked on before I came out here. The pandemic, as I mentioned um, before, um, had a huge impact on me in the way that I was in a Manhattan apartment and completely isolated um, and with scaffolding outside, so very little light, if any, outside. And I began to record the light that came into my um, apartment every once in a while when when the natural light um, would enter into my apartment and that became this series of videos that I did that I um, that were a response also to the to this um, new feeling of uh, having trouble sleeping um, and or sleeping um, disorders um, during this time 
um, some of which I've exhibited recently in an exhibition curated by He Wong, um, who, um, and an exhibition called Pandemic Diaries out in Old Westbury, SUNY Old Westbury College. Um, it also connects to a project that I'm working on for a museum in Denmark, Svendborg Museum. The museum has discovered this story about my great grandfather's brother, um, who was um, found on the island of Midway, um, which is an island and at all between Japan and Hawaii. And he was found there in 1888 by a ship that came in, um, shipwrecked too, like the previous ship where he was part of the crew. At that point, he had been there for eight months all by himself on the island and survived by eating birds, eggs, and um, fishing, um, and just mentally going through a lot of turmoil, um, deciding to first that he wanted to commit suicide, but then changing it to actually trying to get the best of it and beginning to create a, a, a routine every day where he would get up and uh, repair and build a hut that he could live in. So it's a it's a quite uh, colorful story, um, and the museum has invited me to make a piece about it for an exhibition where they've invited artists to respond to their collection, and um, this will be my piece. Um, this is also a video. I'll show you a little bit of a snippet of it in a minute, um, where it's sort of my way of imagining what it would have been like to be on this island for eight months all by yourself, not knowing what will happen. Um, and maybe we should just go jump to that. So I think I'll start with some of the insomnia. And I 
and this is um, the beginning of the midway piece that I'm working on. And I wanted to just show you one last video that I did before I came out here, but also interestingly <laughs> has birds all around it. Um, and it There we go.
So, um, so Derek, perhaps we can open it up for conversation. Right? Yes, uh, let's have some questions. If you guys have anything you, you want to ask, um, we're a small enough group, you can probably raise your hand or just start talking. Otherwise, you can throw a question in the chat and I will read it out. Um, yeah, go ahead, Anna. Hi, Lisa. Um, Hi, <laughs> it's so wonderful to see your work. Um, and such beautiful imagery. Um, I've spent quite a bit of time in the North Fork. Um, and so I was very struck by the imagery and the abstraction and how you, you talked about the work and placed it in relationship to um, your previous work. And so I guess I'm, I'm, my question is, um, you know, you evoke all of these amazing themes of solitude and darkness and light. Um, and that comes through in the, in the imagery. And I'm wondering if, you know, there's a sense of connection in terms of placehood um, amongst these different series in the sense that you're dealing with kind of seafaring imagery or, and if that, if that is, something important to you or is it is it more this idea of a kind of of an abstraction of, of a feeling and an, an abstraction of of uh themes of solitude darkness and light i'm just curious oh well, this is a good question thank you for that um i think it varies um in the case of the midway project for example i have not been able to go there i hope i will be able to go there and get actual footage but um because I'm here and um, working with the imagination of it, it's actually constructed from many different places. So parts of that footage come from Denmark, another from Key West when, from when I was there um, in a residency and some is from Far Rockaway. Um, and um, so they, it is all footage that I have taken, but it's footage from different places. And I, it, I thought about that but thought about it too as a, as a way of constructing a memory or an imagination of something that's not necessarily real, but that is based on different snippets from the past that we sort of stitch together and begin to build an image um, um, about something that we imagine might have taken place. And so, um, so in that case, it's, 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 it's coming from different places. Um, here, because I'm here, it's very much anchored in, in this environment right now that I'm in, but also this way of embracing a moment um, right here and right now and recording and um, creating footage that in many ways then can be turned into a final um, Product. And at the same time, I'm wondering in seeing and looking at what I'm doing with the, this kind of diary that I started out showing, whether there's not something there that I should just keep um, for it being um, this moment and being truly sort of happening in the now. So it's a, that was a convoluted answer, but I think it's, it's, it's really both depending on what the situation is. Yeah, no, not at all. I don't think it's convoluted at all. And I think what you're trying to get it is is kind of like the complexity of all of those things and mm -hmm. so I think it's interesting because I think just thinking about the specificities of North Fork um I guess like what a wonderful place for you to be in right now and to sort of embrace kind of the abstraction that happens there in the sense yeah. that like you know, as New Yorkers mm -hmm. you know right it's a part of New York but then you feel like you're in some other place it's so otherworldly that is indescribable in a way and I feel like the imagery that you capture can kind of conveys that abstraction to a certain extent so I, I feel like it could be a really great prompt for for this you know for your ongoing project anyway just just some two cents <laughs> thank you so much it's it's totally true and I actually hadn't thought about it in that way that it is just like you were sort of in space in a different way when you move from one place to the other there's a different not only do you have different inputs but also 
um, your experiences of it, particularly having been away from, from a natural site for a long time, um, makes it almost unreal or abstract. So thank you. Kathy? It's, uh, <clears throat> it's great to see uh, all your work. I'm fascinated by, you know, um, all the video work, the pin, you know, the pinhole images too that you had shared, some of those pinhole camera ones. Um, I too spent some time in the North Fork um, oh. in summer. <laughs> And, and um, it's beautiful. I mean, it's beautiful out there, and it is this otherworldly kind of experience, you know, living in in, in the city. So, um, but I was interested in a couple of things. Just the, the use of water. You know, I love those underwater images because I know those rocks. You know, and, and uh, that rocky underwaterness. Um, and that, I mean, I loved all those different images. So I was interested in the role of water and all of across your work, because that seems to be also a key theme. But also um, I was interested in, in hearing about your process of layering all of the images in the video work. Mm, yeah, thank you. That's two really good questions. Uh, water has always been something that, has, that I've been drawn to. And I think it has to do with growing up close to water um, in Denmark, where you don't have to go too far on your bicycle, then there's water and you can jump in it if it's warm enough, or just sit and, and, and look at it. And it has this incredible soothing quality to it, I think, um, when I'm at the uh, near water. And the different times when I've been living not so close to water, I've sometimes had this kind of, I need to go see what I need to go see what I just have to jump on a train and go and, and be near the, the water. So it, um, it, it makes sense, I guess, that it seeps into my work in all different kinds of ways um, and also um, becomes a motif in, 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 the, in the work that I do. Um, the layering is um, also really Good question. I've, I've been playing around for, for some time, but here particularly the past couple of days, I've been layer, layering the darkness um, and working with the absence of light in, in darkness in a way by, uh, by putting several screens next to one another or it's the overlapping and changing the, the ways in which the light um, comes through in the on the screen and, and in the video, but also laying different kinds of footage to create sort of a go the other way and create a, a darker and darker and darker image by by um, by adding one on top of the other until it's almost completely dark. Um, so it goes both ways, and it's it's almost like painting, and but with a with video footage and with with light in that way that you can you can do so many things with the video medium that um, creates suddenly a certain atmosphere or an air quality in it um, that I that I quite like. Thank you. I've got a related question about technique in that um, um, sort of like how much of the, the effects are in camera and how much are software based. And you know, when you threw the camera in the, in the water, it's really ex romantic and exciting because mm -hmm. it isn't, isn't in the software, it's in the world. Mm -hmm. And especially that last video you showed where the, there's a little color coming in, there's light. Like, I can't tell if you're putting something in front of it to get the, the, the white or if it's all post, post shooting. So I'd love to hear more about that. It's it's very simple with me, <laughs> both the recording and and uh, and the and the editing um, too. And I and I really like that kind of simplicity. It's um, well, the pinhole camera. It cannot get more much more basic than that, right? It's literally a hole, and then um, light comes in when you when you open up with a piece of tape, and and there's a piece of paper inside, and and that's it, and you only get one one image. Um, and I, there's something about that simplicity that I really, really enjoy and that I'm drawn to because I think it also has a certain raw quality to it that, and direct quality that I, that I like to work with. So I'm not a big tech person, um, not, not because I'm not interested in it, but because I really enjoy that 
simplicity in it. So, so the different kinds of footage that you are seeing, most of it is shot with my iPhone um, and um, then edited, but not with any kind of fancy filters or, or um, fooling around with um, different kinds of apps and whatnot. Um, unless it's an app that takes me back to something that looks like Super 8 or that somehow can <laughs> take me back in time and back to sort of the roots of, of filmmaking um, as well. So, um, and the editing, a lot of, yeah, there's editing involved um, and, but again, um, it, it's, it's, it's focusing more on on the outcome than it is on the on the technique um, necessarily. And I've been very drawn to. Um, I've been watching a lot of Bergman's um, movies lately to see, you know, to get that kind of emotional and see how he sets it up. Um, but I'm also been interested in experimental filmmaking, um, like Stan Brakhage and others too, that are using that kind of really just basic. Um, way of thinking about the medium and 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 working with that and experimenting with it as much as I can. Did that answer your question, Derek? Yeah, I, uh, for some reason I kept thinking of Sadie Benning and her like really oh. cuts and like yeah. just curious like where where you were on that spectrum. That's interesting. I haven't really thought about that, um, but I'll give it some more thought. Um, I'm, I'm not sure <laughs> how to respond. <laughs> um, yeah, go ahead, Amy. So um, I'm very jealous that you're out on the North Fork by yourself, mm -hmm. uh, by the water, and I'm extraordinarily jealous when I'm still in New York City. Um, and I'm wondering, and this is a multiple part. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> Do you, um, okay, you've obviously taken a great advantage of our horrible isolation um, that we've gone through in the last year, two years and stuff like that. Um, do you think your work is going to emerge into the light? Um, is mm -hmm. going to stay there? I'm mm -hmm. finding that a lot of artists I know, it's coming. We're, all, we're all still stuck in the darkness. I can't seem to get started and I keep creating the same images that I've been creating during this last two years. Mm -hmm. What's going to happen? Oh, it's coming, it's coming, Amy. <laughs> For sure, I mean, I'm already thinking about it and and working on some ideas to 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 flip it around, similar to the layering of the film that was just talking about, where you can go and make it darker and darker and darker and more and more kind of um, dense in the darkness. I also want to flip it around and work with the light um, and loosen it up and have both of those two things work. And that color that he mentioned, I, it looked like Shinnecock Hills out there. I knew it was the wrong place, but it looked like the Shinnecock Hills with some of that color coming through. That would be beautiful too. No, that was East River in <laughs> Manhattan. <laughs> you just have to catch the right moment, you know, <laughs> just around five. That's what it looks like. <laughs> Samir? Oh, you just muted, Samir. There you go. Okay, you can hear me now? Yeah. All right. So um, there was something you said earlier about um, the presence uh, when you're there and recording it and the, the kind of journalist, you know, journaling and uh, the recording of that moment. Um, and I think that's that's what feels prescient about this work. But on the other hand, on the opposite side of that, it feels like generic memory. Memory itself is it's an exploration of, you know, the the graininess or the the just the quality of of that as a concept. Mm -hmm. And you know, um, I came late to it, so I haven't seen, but I kind of get a sense of, of your work so far. And um, 
there is a very um, uh, low tech handmade quality, which, which allows for that. It's not like, you know, it's not specific to place, even though you are, you know, being, you know, a moment in time in that specific place, there is something larger and more generic going on as well. I mean, not generic in a, you know, ordinary way, but, you know, the concept of memory itself and place. And... Yeah, it's really interesting to think about. Um, now I'm thinking also about some of the pinhole photographs that I did in Denmark, where I went to some of the different places that I knew my grandfather and my no, my great grandfather and my grandmother had had been to living in the town where I was at a residency and 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 took photographs of some of those different places with my pinhole cameras and that created this layering of imagery, of course, because I had multiple apertures. Um, but it also created a layering of time, a layering of past and present that melted together in in some ways, even if it wasn't my history necessarily yeah. right i was i was in a place it was in real time using an old kind of camera to photograph a history a, a sense of a past that i hadn't experienced myself but felt in some ways connected to by being in that space and that's something i've been interested in too the ways in which memory and space are connected because I had several experiences when I was at that residency of really feeling a sense of belonging to the, the town Swinbor, um, despite the fact that I don't have any memories other than once I went visiting with my mother. But I felt this kind of, I was home in a strange way. And it um, piqued my curiosity enough that I began to look into seeing if there's any kind of science on that or any kind of literature on that. And also, I also um, contacted a couple of neuroscientists to see if, if there was something they could guide me to. And it seems as if the, it has, well, it hasn't been fully, it hasn't been, been, been um, analyzed but it seems as if there is a maybe a possibility that the body actually can remember space also and pass it on from generation to the to generation so i'm quite intrigued by that um and that possibility so so that's one of my interests another interest is also in language and how language and space can be connected uh, something again that comes from personal experience of speaking multiple languages and having studied in Poland and speaking Polish, but realizing when I go back to Poland, I speak significantly better than I do when I'm somewhere else. And, and that is something that there is signs on that smells and, and space and environment has an, an effect on, on the ways in which we learn language and also recall language later on. So suddenly being in a situation where you have the smells and the, the light and the circumstances around you that is similar that is similar to, to the circumstances that you had presence when you were learning the language, suddenly that can prompt some, some word from the back of your mind um, uh, just by your body experiencing that setting um, again. And I find that really fascinating. So you're right, Samira, there's a lot of memory too that seeps in and out of my work and the ways in which I think about imagery and construct these um, photographs or videos or installations. There? Oh, we can't hear you, Dell. I don't know why. Doesn't yeah. seem like your speaker is working. Okay. <laughs> wanna, do you want to write it in the chat and we'll read it out? Your question. Okay. Um, I had another question about uh, sound because when you watch your films, it's 
it screams out for a, a soundtrack or for narration. And I find I find myself going like, why isn't there a narration? Why isn't there content? <laughs> but then I also think, oh, but I maybe one needs to be alone in this sort of negative space or this neutrality to to experience what you're trying to say. So I'd love to hear your your thoughts on sound. <laughs> It's so funny you're asking because I have actually been going back and forth on this one, the last, the, the, the sort of diaries that I was showing at the beginning and wondering if I should include texts of different kinds or words or, or sounds here and there. And then I decided not to, um, but it is on my mind um, uh, that there the, the might, and there might be a, a piece that will have sound at a certain point, but at the moment, it's exactly for the same reasons that you were saying that this, when, when it's quiet, you sort of left alone a little bit more with what you're looking at, I find. And, I, and, and maybe also even slowed down a little bit um, compared to a sound track that would run along with it and um, put in a place where you maybe feel a little uncertain or uncomfortable, but then, um, have to engage with what you have and 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 sort of work with it. So it it does. I do like to have that isolated too. This the sound and the and the and the imagery, mm. and to to leave it for us to. And also, the title of diary really brings you into that space space of expectation. Yeah, uh, which I think is nice. Thank you. Are there any more questions? Bill, un unmute yourself. Oh. Hi, Lizette, Drew here. Hi. Um, hi. So uh, I was just wondering, you know, you, you're talking about um, creating a diary in terms of space. Uh, have, you, have you thought of recreating certain smells? Um, sometimes they also, um, uh, you know, it's, when you say installation, obviously not on the video or digitally, but when you do installations, trying to recreate um, or recreate some of the smells that would transport you um, to that situation. Absolutely, it's, and it's amazing, isn't it? How smells can take you just immediately to a particular memory or to a particular place that you were in the past. Um, I haven't done it yet, but I have thought about it too. And, and actually sound can also do that as well. Um, so that's a that's a great question, um, Drew. Thank you so much for that. Lisa, you have a hand. I'm so sorry. Hi. <laughs> I, I am listening to everything and enjoying it so much. <laughs> but I I couldn't be at the whole talk because I had to do a. Um, an open house at the college where I teach. Oh. So I have been like in between things and I only caught half, but I hope that there is a recording and I'd like to look through everything. So, uh, and I didn't know I had a hand because it's on my phone and I, I oh. don't know what to do with the phone. So I'm so sorry. So, okay, now I can put my video on. Hi. Hi. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but I feel very connected to the work, what I saw and I had been earlier also curious for your work. So I think we need to get together and kind of maybe we'll have a, yes, you know, definitely. Okay, and, and maybe look at work. Um, and I if there's a thing of the talk, I would love to see all of the work, but you know, I had to retreat more to New Jersey because of my job and also COVID. And so I've been much more in nature. And from the last parts that I saw, I was like, this is exactly what I am filming all the time. Like the birds. <laughs> <laughs> great moments that are just so awesome you know it's like beautiful moments in in a gray sky or with the birds or movements that I've been obsessed with as well I just haven't really put it into any form or art or <laughs> I'm just like compulsively filming and collecting and experiencing which is a side I was just not ever focused on in the same way and I think that's what happened when, you know, everything, all the changes that we're going through. And yeah, so I was really happy to see that and really interested in it and kind of really thinking about, you know, what it means and what those experiences are like, you know. So thank you for that. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and we'll find a time to 
connecting yeah. the yeah. 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 Oh, sorry, I didn't have a question. great. Thank you. Thank you. I just wanted to read out um, Dell's uh, comment since he couldn't get the sound to work. So he says, I see multiple different times overlapping simultaneously, causing new memory and experience. Nice. Thank you, Dell. That is very beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> and thank you all for coming and being here. And yes, thank you, Lisa. It's great to see the work, and I hope to see more of it when you get back. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you.